here. Oh, Jonathan, it's two, lovely to be here. Two of my funniest, uh, my favourite medium-sized funny men. Why can't you just... What do we say? We were stood backstage, we said, it'll be the height. He yeah. will go for the height. <laughs> and Jonathan has gone for the height. And you don't need to go for anything else. Well, the height will do. Yeah. We are, we are six foot each. We are. You, sir, yeah. are freakishly tall. <laughs> Well, you know I went for the height because you're unassailable in every other Why area. Why can't you just say nice it's things? A, it's nice a lovely to atmosphere. People. Hundreds of comedians uh. together. What could be nicer? <laughs> no. There's never such a nice atmosphere as at the British <laughs> Comedy Awards. Rob and I Awards. have come here in the goodness of faith yes. just to have a nice time yeah. to join, join in with the pleasure, frankly, of giving an award away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no agenda. No. An award which is coincidentally about the same size as my new book. <laughs> Which book is that, Jack? It's called Thanks for Nothing. Thanks for Nothing? It's is a, that your sort of autobiography? Yeah, it's quite similar to your DVD, isn't it? Oh, Rob Brydon yeah. Live, Rob yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? Yeah. If the book sold well enough, you could afford a white shirt, Jack. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be lovely? Listen, pal, I wouldn't even be here. Don't start on the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Cagney and Layton. I don't mean the butch one. <laughs> You once described me looking like a regional weather girl, for which I thank you. Uh, let's have a look at the nominations for Best Comedy Panel Show. Well, I haven't got yet. Is this my moment now? Yes, me now. Mm -hmm. Rob? Yes, Jonathan. Come on, good luck. This is your moment. Please read that out and sell it. Good okay. luck. Good luck. Thank you, Jack. Good luck with the book. Um, <laughs> I've read it. I bloody love it. <laughs> I could do the voiceover for it, you couldn't could. I? That'd be lovely, wouldn't that be lovely? Jack D, have a look at his life. <laughs> In store now. Have I got news for you? Yeah. Please welcome Peter Kay. Peter Kay has won a total of four British Comedy Awards, including one for Writer of the Year in 2002. He was once the frontman for John Smith's Bitter Campaign, despite being teetotal. His mom once a bungalow tour, holds the record as the biggest selling stand-up DVD of all time. Please sit down. <laughs> oh, don't, don't get up. Please, no, sit down. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> Lovely. A bit mad, really, isn't it? <sighs> there you go. I don't know what to say. I made up with Sarkoville winning. Well done. Well done, Reese. Well done, Steve. Yeah, it's well. Yeah, it's great. Thanks very much. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's lovely. It's a bit mad seeing all them clips, isn't it? So. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to uh, my, my, my manager Phil and Lucy, and uh, thanks to everyone who's ever met me. <laughs> everyone who used to work with me at Netto, everyone who used to work with me at Majestic Service Station, <laughs> my mum, my wife Susan, and um, everyone, everyone who's bought a ticket for the new show, thank you. And everyone who's selling them on eBay, thanks very much as well. <laughs> I, can't, I have no control over that. And, and there you go. So lovely. Thank, have a lovely night and thanks very much. Happy Christmas. Thank you. Fresh from playing Souls and Itzin in Panto. <laughs> I've, uh, I've come as Andy Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Andy, your moment has come. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, uh, I, I, no, it's only because I'm, I'm in a play and I couldn't be bothered with the You're ball. Anyway, be in look, there. I'm here for a trip down memory lane, as I can see. I'm the only person who's turned up in in black tie. I thought black tie meant a bow tie and all I, I feel like Duncan Weldon or one of those elderly BBC people <laughs> turning up. But it is a trip down memory lane we are doing here for a very special award to a writer, special in two ways. Partly because it's the Ronnie Barker Writers Guild of Great Britain Award, but also because it's going tonight to a very decent, a very modest, a very honourable man, which sort of cuts out 96% of the people <laughs> sitting in this room. <laughs> it's 
15 years ago about that when I was working on a freelance program I started getting we started getting some fantastic material coming in from two guys and I went to uh, my business partner at the time uh, Peter Fincham I don't know what happened to him but <laughs> I went to him and I said Peter look this, these guys are real they're geniuses they're really fantastic we have to commercially exploit them in some way <laughs> and we got them over and we had a we ha I had a flat, one of mine as a matter of fact, and I put them up in that flat and the two of them sat down and they wrote in that flat one of the greatest sitcoms of, well, ever on British television for another production company <laughs> called <laughs> Hat Trick. <laughs> that was Father Ted and since then this writer <laughs> has written Pure gold for the fast show for Harry Enfield, for Brass Eye, for uh, Big Train, for and now his great personal masterpiece here at uh, the IT crowd. So um, let's have a look at some of that work. Uh, I, I hope he didn't seem rude when I didn't talk to Sir Terry earlier on. It's just that I know that we have a little surprise planned for Terry. Uh, not too big a surprise. We, we don't want to finish him off, no. Um, <laughs> come with me back to 1959, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. Don't go anywhere. When a young man made his first ever broadcast from a Dublin post office. He then helped to create Radio 1 and Radio 2 and for 27 years has presented The Breakfast Show, THE Breakfast Show, to an audience of nearly 10 million people with effortless charm and unique wit. Oh, shut up. Yeah, it's all true. He, he retires from that show next Friday. You're not getting rid of him, though, that easily, because he'll still be there on a Sunday morning and, of course, children in need. But he is, I think, the undisputed master of this medium, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean that. And I've studied and stolen from the best. After 50 years as the country's greatest and favourite broadcaster, it gives me enormous pleasure. It is also genuinely, it's a terrific honour for me to be asked to give to Sir Terry this special Lifetime Achievement Award for radio broadcasting to Sir Terry Wogan. gentlemen it's been a journey uh, this only sustains my long felt theory that in our business if you can stay upright and reasonably sober <laughs> they'll give you something in the end now, I know very well this is the, I don't believe he's going of his own accord, but give him something so that he doesn't come back. <laughs> and I shall take this with me and, and cover it always and back to the, the home for the bewildered, <laughs> the home for infirm and indigent disc jockeys, <laughs> my little room there, put it beside my tooth mug, beside Jimmy Young's room. <laughs> Actually, they'd reserve the room I'm taking for you, but... <laughs> you, you somehow redeemed yourself. <laughs> well, I think I'll... That's my award this year. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the fabulous Sir Terry Wogan. <laughs> Sir Terry Wogan. The one and only, there will never be another.